Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. My name is Tomasz Frontczak. I'm sure all of you knew straight away how to pronounce that just by looking at it. Um, I'm a local here based in Berlin. By day, I am a lead SRE working at one of the local fintech companies. By night, I play with home labs and self-hosting, mostly in order to achieve more data privacy for me and my family. Want to find out more? Here's your link. And today, we're going to talk about backups and restores and stuff like this in the context of self-hosting and running things in somewhat bare metal situations. So start with a quick round of questions for, for you lovely people. I'd like a raise of hands uh, for anyone who actually hosts anything or manages hosts a service, be it at work or at home. That is less than I expected somehow. <laughs> Interesting. OK, so did any of you ever have to actually restore from a backup, like something broke and then you had to restore. Fantastic, awesome. And then those that, of you that didn't raise a hand, when's the last time you tested that you can actually restore from a backup? Nice, but yeah, from, from, from the show of hands, I can already see you're the right audience for this talk. So uh, let's start with a, a cool anecdote. GitLab, uh, it's a small company, you probably haven't heard about it. Uh, <laughs> they do code hosting, and they generally uh, use uh, PostgreSQL clusters to store the databases. And they are really good about their backups, three to one, everything. They have LVM snapshots on the disks where the database runs. They have that uh, uh, copied over to another series, an offsite backup using PG dump, whatever the command is. And they even have like an auxiliary, another backup that syncs as well in S3. Uh, or at least they thought they have until one day they had to restore from a backup because one of the engineers accidentally did a whoopsie and deleted one of the light database instances. Uh, it turns out he went to S3, he's like, I'll just uh, load it from S3. And then it turns out the S3 bucket was empty. Then he found out the, uh, the PG backup command was silently failing for weeks. So they had like two weeks old data. Oh, and the LVM snapshots were enabled, but not on the one like, set of disks that was running the database just for the other stuff. So that was a fantastic ride. I highly recommend reading a blog post. Two takeaways from this. Don't be like GitLab in terms of <laughs> uh, not checking your backups, but also be like GitLab and write fantastic postmortems. Uh, there's a link to it later in the slide. So, <clears throat> with this in mind, if we look at how some of you might be running a Nextcloud instance, this is more or less how I run it. I have a MariaDB for the database, just a single instance. Then you have the configuration files that have to live somewhere, and then you have the actual data, so the files. And how you may backup these really depends. Um, in a lot of scenarios, you'd say, okay, so my configuration is actually somewhere in a Git repo, and then it's also on my local hard drive because I'm working on it or changing this stuff. Your MariaDB, you can also have like a backup just running to a disk somewhere, uh, or a snapshot, or NFS, and then user data. It's just like a mix. So now imagine something breaks, and you use all of these built-in mechanisms for each part or each data type. It's a bit of a hindrance to figure out what to restore from where if it's not uniform. Like you don't really have a good idea of uh, or good control over where the snapshot of each data was taken. So I had this problem and I uh, completely borked my instance of Nextcloud and then couldn't recover it. This is, uh, you live, you learn, right? So I thought, okay, let's start over and I'm going to try and um, rewind and take a, take, a, take a closer look at how I'm going to do it. I need it to be simple. I'm doing this in my own time. Uh, this is not my job. I need it to be simple. Uh, I need, ideally, all of the backup and restore operations for each data type, and that's not just for Nextcloud, but all the other services I'm running, to be ideally the same, right? I don't want to have to learn five different types of backup recovery mechanisms and then juggle this. And because that's what I work with at work, I want it to be all running in Kubernetes because that's what I'm familiar with. You do you. You use whatever you're familiar with, but I recommend sticking with what you know. <clears throat> then I stumbled across this beauty of a system. Uh, both open source, I think both from Rancho Labs. K3A is a lightweight um, distribution of Kubernetes, and Longhorn is basically a um, layer of storage. It exposes the local storage that you have on your Kubernetes nodes as um, Kubernetes volumes, and then uses iSCSI to mount these onto your nodes in the background, so it doesn't matter where your volumes live. 
Uh, and the coolest thing about it, though, is for backup reasons is it can automatically backup to NFS targets, and it does multi-tenant backup. So you can have multiple uh, copies of this, or multiple clusters backup to a single NFS uh, pool, and then they can all see it. And you can basically use that, as you see here, as a mechanism to transmit your backup. So again, three to one, live data lives in my Kubernetes cluster in my home lab. Then I use TrueNAS Scale, another open source tool that you can freely use. And then I ship all of the backup volumes via WireGuard to a friend's place who also happens to be running TrueNAS Scale. All of this is done basically without any code. This is all like already ready off the shelf open source tooling. You can just configure it mostly for the UI. So how do you say, okay, well, how, what does that have to do with restoring or disaster recovery? Well, the cool thing is all you need to restore your service is spawn another Kubernetes cluster. And ideally, you have your, all your config data to do that, or you have it already done in, in the first place. And then you can just load all the volumes from this copy, remote copy, and then to you know, slam dunk this baby. You just point your HA proxy to the new copy, and now you've, you've basically restored and you're back alive. And it is super simple. I uh, recommend playing with it. Uh, key takeaways here. Um, <laughs> start testing your backups and restores today. <laughs> Don't be like GitLab. And also uh, make it all simple and make your backups, uh, or design your backups with recovery in mind in the first place just to not have a headache when you actually need to, need, need to use them. With that, thank you very much. Uh, that's all for me.